it is a mission of challenges. We've already been through several hurdles already, and um, to some extent, we're very pleased to have, have come over them. So yes, I mean, there's, there's the wake up on the 20th, then we have to ultimately start switching our own instruments on, see if they still work. Uh, we then have to look at the comet, see if it's possible even to land at all. Then we've got to get down on the ground. Uh, and then we've got to find out if our instruments have survived it to the ground, and then we've got to start uh, acquiring the data. So uh, there's lots of times when one's heart could be beating quite quickly, I think. I mean, what we're particularly interested in is, is questions such as, what are the relationships between the materials that comets are made of uh, with equivalent materials that we find on Earth or in other parts of the solar system? And water is a good example there. Uh, we know that comets um, are made of water, are made of water ice. Um, but what we're interested in, is there a relationship between the water in comets and the water that we find on Earth? In other words, did comets actually bring that water to the surface of the primitive Earth? And if we can assess whether that's true or not, we can then start looking at the other components that are in the comets, the organic compounds and whatever else, and begin to sort of get a picture of what uh, primitive uh, organic compounds were brought to the surface of the early Earth as well. And clearly at that point, we're looking back in time uh, at a period um, before life uh, had got started on the Earth, but we're beginning to look at the actual building blocks of, um, of biology on Earth. What this uh, instrument does is um, it will be involved with a campaign where solid samples are drilled out of the surface of the comet, delivered into the spacecraft, and then they'll be put into an oven connected to this instrument. The oven will heat the sample up, and all the materials that are in there will then ultimately go into this instrument and this will tell us what the comet is made out of. This is a, a scale model of the lander. Uh, the lander is called Philae. Uh, normally it is completely covered in solar panels. Um, they are taken off so that we can see the insides here. And uh, as I say, this is a scale model. Uh, the, the real thing I always say is about the size of a washing machine. So that gives you some idea about how, how big the, uh, the whole lander is. And our instrument um, that we saw in the laboratory is actually buried deep inside here. Uh, and uh, the way it gets samples is through this device here, which is a drill, which goes down into the surface of the comet, brings the uh, materials up. They then get put into an oven round the back here, and that gets rotated into to mating with our instrument. Once you've developed uh, sophisticated instrument, instrumentation that is literally the size of a shoebox, you then have uh, potential applications that you would never have had previously with laboratory-sized instruments, either because they're too big, they're too heavy, you can't wheel them around. Um, and so the applications are in any number of, uh, of areas. They could be in pollution, in, in global climate change issues, uh, or in healthcare, which is something that we've been uh, exploring. So we've been involved with a number of studies involved with uh, uh, applications in TB detection, uh, cancer detection, and so on. Uh, in some ways, uh, some of the applications are uh, way more surprising to us than we'd imagined uh, at the start. I think all of us who've been involved with it over these years are quite grateful that we've got to, you know, that we are getting to this point, the point where we're actually going to do the things that we set out to do. Um, it is nerve-wracking, of course, because there are plenty of things that could go wrong. Um, but it's what it, space exploration is all about.